So having personal retirement accounts is, a, is another way of making a, a future retiree benefits more secure for their retirement. And also, do you believe that personal retirement accounts as a component to a system of solvency does help improve solvency? Because when you have a personal retirement account policy and it's accompanied with a benefit offset, with that feature in place, do you believe that personal retirement accounts can help us achieve solvency for the system and make those future retiree benefits more secure? Well, I, I wouldn't say that the uh, as you go benefits are insecure in the sense that um, there's nothing to prevent the federal government from creating as much money as it wants and paying it to somebody. The question is, how do you set up a system which assures that the real assets are created which those benefits are employed to purchase? can pay any debt it has because we can always print money to do that. So there is zero probability of default. Let's hear that again. The United States can pay any debt it has because we can always print money to do that. So there is zero probability of default. tax money that the Fed is spending? It's not tax money. No. The banks have um, accounts with the Fed much the same way that you have an account in a commercial bank. So to lend to a bank, we simply use the computer to mark up the uh, size of the account that they have with the Fed. So it's much more akin, uh, although not exactly the same, but it's much more akin to printing money than it is to borrowing. You've been printing money. Well, effectively, and we need to do that because our economy is very weak and inflation is very low. When the economy begins to recover, that'll be the time that we need to unwind those programs, uh, raise interest rates, reduce the money supply, and make sure that we have a recovery that does not involve inflation. He's not kidding about printing money. The Fed issues U.S. currency. That's why it says Federal Reserve Note on all the bills in your wallet. This is the Bureau of Engraving and Printing just a few blocks from Bernanke's office. The Fed's mandate from Congress is to put enough money in the system for maximum employment, but not so much that it sets off inflation. The Fed actually pays for itself and returns billions in profits to the Treasury. with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. So we, you know, we as a central bank, we have the ability to create money uh, digitally. And we do that by buying treasury bills or, or bonds or other government guaranteed securities. And that, that actually increases the money supply. We also print actual currency and we distribute that through the Federal Reserve Banks. But by law, Chairman Powell's Federal Reserve can only lend money that must be paid back. Congress, he believes, should spend money to expand its historic bailout. Uh, we do expect inflation to move up, both because of base effects, as I discussed yesterday, and also because we could have a surge in spending as the economy reopens. We don't expect that to be a persistent longer term force. So while you could see prices move up, that, that's a different thing from persistent high inflation, which we do not expect. And if we do get it, then we have the tools to deal with it. What would you say constitutes sound money? Well, the, the public has confidence in the currency, which they do, which the world does. Uh, that's that's really what it comes down to that people believe that that the united states currency is is um, perfectly reliable and and stable in value okay so as a store of value uh, it clearly isn't stable in value it, it, it is not um but as a store of value the u.s dollar really is it diluted is as a store of value uh when m2 goes up by more than 25 percent in one year does that does the printing of more U.S. dollars 
somehow diminish the value of the dollars that others hold? You know, um, there was a time when uh, monetary aggregates were important determinants of inflation, and that has not been the case for a long time. So you'll see, if you look back, uh, the correlation between movements in different aggregates, you mentioned M2, uh, and, and inflation uh, is, is just very, very low. And you see that now, where inflation is at 1.4% for this year. Inflation dynamics evolve over time, but they don't tend to change overnight. And so we've had, and I remember well, I was in college during the 1970s, I remember well high inflation and this feeling of powerlessness on the part of anyone to deal with it until finally Paul, Paul Volcker did exactly that. And we've been in a low inflation, disinflationary mode ever since. Um, and uh, it, it, so what I see is an economy where there's still a great deal of slack. I see um, the prospect of really significant progress as we put the pandemic behind us, as we see that data, we've got in place guidance that, that tells markets clearly when we will begin to taper asset purchases and when we will begin to raise interest rates when the, when the economy, in that case, when the, when the uh, expansion is very far advanced. So we have our tools, we have them in place, and we think that this is the appropriate policy stance. As I mentioned, um, you know, inflation, uh, it, it's something I remember well, and I'm very familiar with the history of the 1960s. I guess, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, sorry to interrupt. I guess my question is more about, I, I, I know where you are today, but I'm, I'm curious about what you consider the leading indicators, and in particular, whether you're concerned about challenged supply chains, because, of course, they are challenged. So those are things like supply chains are, unless they're permanently challenged, you know, there could be a... I mean, take an, take an example of the, of the, uh, the chips issue with uh, microchips issue, issue right now. Uh, the automobile industry is having a hard time getting it. So this is a significant economic issue. Um, and if there's a shortage of cars, then prices of cars might go up. That doesn't necessarily lead to inflation because inflation is a process that repeats itself year on year on year. So supply chain issues, as we, as we get back up to full, op, you know, full, uh, you know full economic activity, you could hit supply chain constraints along the way, but that doesn't necessarily mean you, you will have a higher inflationary process if the Fed maintains its credibility and if inflation expectations remain anchored, uh, which they weren't in the 1960s.